welcome back to Primetime Sports. I'm Randy Gardner. As we mentioned, Dr. Rob Elder once again here on the show with us. Today we're going to talk about a variety of things, whether you're an athlete or just the person who gets out there and does a little daily exercise. There's some exciting new techniques as far as your, your spine, which is kind of the, the core of everything. And believe right. me, I learned that. Right. <laughs> First of all, before we get started, tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got into this business. Um, actually, I was uh, pre-med and uh, had a, an experience with chiropractic that saved me from a surgical intervention. And uh, I uh, got into the field right after that. So I've been doing it for about almost 18 years. You enjoy this? I, I mean, is it, it yeah, something you great. enjoy getting up to do every day? I do. Yeah, yeah. I, but the alarm clock goes off and I'm already up. So it's great. I love it. A savior for many people, huh? Yeah, absolutely. What would you say as we get started here? Because a lot of people don't understand what a chiropractor does. Mm -hmm. Some, you know, it's kind of a misunderstood right. um, profession. Yeah, and really what chiropractic is thought about is for back pain. If my back hurts, I go see a chiropractor. If I don't have pain, I don't really need to see a chiropractor. But chiropractors look at what we do more for health optimization. So your nervous system runs everything. So if your spine's out of position, you're going to affect the way the nervous system functions. So your brain can't communicate with the organs and systems of the body. So that's really what chiropractic is about, is wellness care, optimization of, of somebody's health. And I have a lot of wellness patients that come in that have no pain. They just like what chiropractic has done for their lifestyle. Do you find some people maybe misunderstand what you do that, um, you know, you hear the word, well, they don't do anything. Mm -hmm. What would you say to the people out there who, I guess, don't, do not believe in chiropractors? Well, I, the, the patients that don't believe in, I say, look, it's not a religion, it's a science. It doesn't take a belief, it takes an understanding of what we do. And if you look at all the studies that have been done by the federal government, the Agency for Healthcare Policy and Research, that they found that chiropractic was the most effective uh, treatment for any kind of pain syndrome in the back uh, against medical care or any other interventions. So it is very effective, it's been proven uh, and very well researched. What do you find is the most common injury when someone calls to see you? We see a lot of disc injuries uh, because the mechanics of the spine have broken down from a lack of maintenance, kind of like if you've gone to a dentist and you've never brushed and flossed your teeth and you're 25 years old, 30 years old, and the dentist is going to be like, wow, what have you not done here? Uh, and we see a lot of the same things. A lot of lack of maintenance care leads to disc injuries, um, you know, lower back pain. It's pretty prevalent. About 85% of the population is going to have an episode sometime in their life. And that kind of leads us into why we wanted to have you on the sports show here. Um, in terms of, there's so many athletes out there, myself included, all the years of growing up, doing things wrong. Mm -hmm. You know, lifting wrong, sitting wrong, right. and it finally catches up to you. And sometimes it takes to your 30 or 40 mm -hmm. or 50 or 17, like myself. <laughs> I herniated my first disc in my lumbar spine at 17 years old. Uh, I was a competitive bodybuilder and weightlifter for 14 years, and uh, I didn't know it, but I had a structural imbalance, and that's one of the things that got me into chiropractic. Uh, so there's some technology now that we didn't have when I started practice that we utilize in those patients that uh, maybe were a surgical case that we really couldn't help, but now we've got technology that we can't help them. In terms of, you mentioned getting hurt at a young age, is this something that you can correct and be okay in the future, or do you just live and manage this the rest of your life? If you injure a disc, unfortunately you have to manage it, but there's things that we can do to create a lot of core strength and stabilization, and once again, uh, supporting that patient in a structural sense to where they're not gonna have as many episodes. And if they do, it's gonna be very minor. To jump back here, you mentioned the word disc. What is that for the layman like myself? I mean, how, as we talk about this, when you injure or blow something out, what actually happens? A lot of people refer to it as a slip disc. Now you really can't slip a disc because they're anchored into the bone very tightly, but the disc acts as a, as a fulcrum for the, the spine to move around. And it's, a, it's made out of cartilage, it's cushiony, and it's got a center in it, like a, think of it like a jelly donut. And the jelly-like material is what ends up uh, extruding out if you herniate a disc. And so that causes a tremendous amount of pain on most patients. Some people can have a herniation and not feel it at all at first. And then eventually they usually will. You get leg pain, the typical sciatica type pain. Uh, your back locks up. When you stand up, you're antalgic. The patient presents very, very shifted in their posture. And we see that quite a bit. Now, how is this correct? Does it go back in or do, do you lose it? I mean, what happens after, after you injure yourself like this? Once, once you herniate the disc, depending on how the patient presents, if they have a loss of bowel and bladder control, 
that is surgical intervention. Uh, you got to be very careful with those. So, um, but we ascertain basically the extent of the injury with the patient. Typically, with with radiographs, MRI is really the best test to show the soft tissue damage. Um, so we'll analyze the patient and see if they are a candidate for care. And if they are, then we start care on them. Now, if they get no care at all, it's hard to say what happens. Uh, eventually, they may be out of pain. It could take weeks. It could take months. And you can do some permanent nerve damage by then. So, so does the jelly-like material go back in? It or can. does it just heal its, I mean, what? It actually, it actually kind of shrivels up and dries up. Uh, if you look at an old disc on, on cadavers when we were in school, we had to do cadaveric uh, examinations and look at these cadavers. But they look like old Fig Newtons <laughs> that have dried up. It's supposed to be shiny and, and plump. And those discs, because of the lack of motion in the spine, we call that subluxation in chiropractic, is that lack of motion prevents that disc from getting the proper nutrients because they don't have very good blood supply. So it has to have motion in that spine. And what people don't understand is that when your spine gets out of position, that subluxation, that prevents proper nourishment to the disc, which will eventually lead to a, a, typically a bulge or herniation. You look at a lot of people, and you can just tell by the way they stand that their posture is wrong. That's right. If you get your your backbone in a certain area, you stand a certain way, or you slump, which was a problem of mine for many years of slumping in the car and mm -hmm. on the couch, and the only place I would ever sit up straight was here at the news desk, can you work your spine back into the correct shape it should be? Yeah, yes, you can. Uh, one of the things that we do is we, when we analyze a patient for before we start care, is we measure their angles of uh, it's called absolute rotation angles of their spine. So in your low back, you should have a curve in your back of 40 degrees. Uh, so we look at that on x-ray. And it should be in a certain position from the side, not too far forward, not too far backwards. You see a lot of people with the, the typical slump posture. That puts a tremendous amount of mechanical load on places where the spine shouldn't have load. And so you end up bulging those discs. But yes, we can reshape those spines. That's what chiropractic biophysics does. And you look at certain people and they have a, a neckline that's perfectly straight or protruded that's out. Right. Is this part of chiropractic too? It is. Uh, a lot of chiropractors don't focus on, on restoration of posture, which is what we do. Uh, so most chiropractors do the pain relief care, which is good in itself. But I decided to go the next step because analyzing patients for, for mechanics is really going to give them better long-term results. So we actually fix things. I want to correct that spine, not just patch it up. All right, let's talk about this spinal disc decompression, mm -hmm. something new out there. How does it work and what does it do? The theory has been around for a while, um, 10, 15, 20 years, uh, but really it's, it's come to the forefront probably in the last five years. What spinal disc decompression does is it, it's, a, it's a passive therapy. We put a patient on a table, it's run by a computer, and there's a comfortable harness that we place around the pelvis and the rib cage, and it basically creates a tractioning effect. Uh, disc decompression is an effect of tractioning. So it's a computerized way to traction the spine and creates a vacuum and it literally separates the joints to where that vacuum effect pulls that nuclear material that's, that's extruded out, that's hitting that nerve root, back into where it should be. Now is this something that in one treatment you're fine or is this a multiple ongoing? The research has shown that the patient will get the best response in actually healing the disc over 20 to 24 sessions. Um, now a lot of patients that I've done decompression on they get instantaneous results. So they'll feel better from day one. Um, and that's kind of the danger because they say, well, I'm better. I don't need any more. It's not the way it works because you can be in, you know, feeling better, but you're still not healed. And so a lot of those patients that disappear, they'll be back with, with uh, the same problem again. Is this kind of the next, I guess, per se, generation of chiropractic? I believe or is so. Or this just a, a help along with it? Well, I think that, that it's, it's a help with the principles of chiropractic, which is trying to do things conservatively without surgical intervention. And even orthopedic surgeons, we've gotten referrals from neurosurgeons, orthopedic surgeons, that understand that that patient's not a surgical case, try some conservative methods, because the research shows that less than 50% of the patients who do get surgery get a good outcome. What would you say in terms of someone out there taking their time and make sure that they find the right chiropractic doctor? Because when you go to a general practitioner, you want to make sure that fit is right. How important is it with the chiropractor? Well, you want to find somebody that, that, that uh, is going to do a good job for you. Typically, we get a lot of referrals. My practice is 95% referral. Um, so you want to look at the education of the physician, of the chiropractor. You know, 